Thank you for joining me here, uh, and welcome. Uh, my name is Sylvester Zauga, and I am a technical director at Third Kind Games. And uh, this is 9299, growing an independent studio from the ground up. Um, uh, so this is going to be uh, a little bit of our history. And uh, I'm going to share our journey uh, to, from 2016, when we are just starting up, to the moment where we are now, um, working on multi multiple projects for multiple co companies, as well as working on our own uh, games and our own IP. So I'm going to start uh, with this quote, by, famously said by Albert Einstein, uh, that uh, one in 10 businesses fail within the first year of uh, uh, their existence, and about six in 10 fail um, within five years. Um, so our odds are not terrible, uh, but uh, um, there is a risk there. So I think there is, um, it's worth sharing our experiences, and I hope uh, our journey will inspire yours. And yeah, despite Albert Einstein discovering that all the way in 1920, that was actually confirmed by the Office of National Statistics in, in the UK uh, in the last year. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about today, um, so I'm going to introduce us, uh, I'm going to tell us about a little bit about our history and what we do. I am then going to move on to our early days, uh, how we started and how we make the decision to open a new studio. Um, I'm then going to briefly cover uh, the starting team, uh, what we thought was important uh, in terms of skill set that we needed to start. And then I'm going to briefly talk about the projects that we worked, uh, especially the first project that we got and how the skills that we had uh, among the founding team helped us secure that project. Um, then I will move on uh, to our approach uh, in growing the team. Uh, I'll follow that with the challenges uh, that we face currently uh, and how we are planning to tackle them. Um, and then move on to talk a little bit about our plans for the future and what's in store for us. And I'll finish with summing up uh, our, my presentation. So we are Turkan Games. Uh, you've probably seen uh, logos all around this building. Uh, we are headquartered in Leamington Spa, UK. Uh, we are currently at about 80 employees and contractors, and we're growing. And we are working both on our own IP, our own games, uh, as well as uh, doing projects for external companies. And throughout our history, uh, not long history, uh, but still, we've uh, worked with multiple exciting uh, clients, including Amazon, Amazon Games, uh, Microsoft Studios, uh, Mythical Games, and also a very, very exciting project that we just started earlier this year, uh, about which currently I still cannot say much, but uh, I'll few, uh, say a few more words uh, later on in this presentation. Um, before I move on, uh, I may just uh, tell you a little bit about Leamington Spa, because we are in Poland. You probably haven't heard about this, that little town. Um, so it's a town right in the middle of England. Uh, it's probably as far as you can get from the sea in England. And it's probably a little bit inconspicuous if you are not in the uh, video games industry. Uh, it's about it's a home for about 50,000 people. Uh, but the interesting thing about the town is that uh, about 2% of the population in Leamington actually makes games. So about more than 1,000 people. Uh, there's more than 1,000 developers in Leamington Spa. And there are more than 40 uh, different studios uh, in Leamington and in the surrounding area including big names like uh, Ubisoft and Microsoft Playground, for instance. Um, so yeah, that, that's going to be relevant to, to the slides that, that follow, so bear with me. Um, so uh, how did we start? Um, I guess our history was probably not that original, so it all started 
with a crash and burn of a different company called Crystal Games. Uh, that was an Activision uh, studio in Leamington Spa. We just, our founding team just uh, finished working on uh, Guitar Hero Live, and it was an amazing project to work on. Uh, very exciting, and we had an amazing team there. However, the game did not uh, meet the expectations, uh, business expectations uh, from Activision, and they decided to first uh, massively reduce the size of the studio, and that was followed with uh, closing the studio altogether. Um, and uh, sizing down the studio uh, didn't look appealing to us, to the uh, founders of Token Games, and we decided that we're going to be move up, moving on. And uh, at first, we were discussing various options, uh, meeting a lot in pubs, discussing what companies are hiring in Leamington uh, Spa and in that area. Uh, but then started also considering first jokingly about uh, potentially starting a new studio. Uh, but uh, then we realized that many of us uh, had the same idea, had similar um, ideas for a studio, want to work on similar things. So we started discussing it a little bit more seriously and started talking about things like uh, why we want to uh, start a new studio, what's important to us. And these were the um, uh, recurring themes in our conversations. Uh, so we wanted to be independent. Uh, we wanted to make, uh, to be able to make decisions about it, our games and, and uh, creative uh, decisions as well, working for big companies like uh, Activision is great uh, and it was a, an amazing experience uh, but it's at the same time it's very difficult to uh, sell the new ideas at big studios and get uh, traction on them. Uh, so the creative in, uh, independence was very important to us. Uh, another thing that uh, was commonly mentioned was the job, job satisfaction. Uh, that's, uh, again, working at big studios, it's, it's a great experience, uh, but also you get uh, compartmentalized a lot in this sort of arrangements. Uh, my, my experience, for, for instance, I've always liked working on different things, work, uh, like I'm a programmer, my background is programming. I like uh, programming gameplay, I like in engine work, uh, I like tools. I like online, and at big studios, you tend to work on one s small thing, and that's okay, if that's your thing, uh, go for it. Uh, but the team that started Turkan Games was a team of generalists, and uh, the opportunity to do what we like and do a lot of different things was an exciting prospect to us. And uh, another thing that was important to us uh, was st stability, and I guess, Sounds a little bit silly uh, when you juxtapose that with uh, a quote uh, by Albert I just read with you earlier. Uh, but we believed that if we play our cards right, uh, we will override, uh, overall will be more stable than uh, if we worked at uh, bigger companies. And obviously, I left it uh, for the uh, bottom of the slide, but it was a very important part for us. It was just fun. It was a nice, exciting challenge, something new. At the time when we were starting up, uh, we had had uh, more than 10 years on average, uh, every founder uh, of experience in video games. So that was the logical next step and something new. And also, why not? Uh, we all ended up at this uh, particular point in our careers when all of us were just uh, facing redundancies, uh, starting a new team and, and new and you get a game studio is difficult, and also convincing new people to join you and help you build it. I, it's a hard sell, to be honest. People are working at uh, stable, uh, have stable jobs, uh, stable companies, uh, and you're asking them to join you and uh, help in this uh, risky business. And, and that's a hard sell, but we all, all nine of us, uh, were at the same point in our careers and ready to start something new. And we believed uh, that we can give it a shot. And if it doesn't work, then we can always get back to uh, where we started. Uh, we're discussing risks as well, uh, but we didn't really think there were many. Uh, 
I put a question mark next to failure because I don't think it's a big risk. Uh, we obviously con considered that we may fail terribly and we'll have to go back to working for other companies. But uh, even though we, if we failed, uh, we'd have learned a lot from that experience and that would help us in our future endeavors regardless. Um, I guess the biggest risk was to just burn through our savings. Uh, we were self-funding our new adventure and there was always risk that we'll start working on something exciting, build a nice demo and we will see the light of the tunnel in the tunnel. Uh, it's going to be all exciting but then we'll just run, run out of funds and, and have to abandon it completely. Um, so what we believed uh, as an important factor uh, and important uh, trait for the starting team. Um, so we believe it's important to have a, co a coverage of all areas of game development, or at least the, the main areas of game development. Uh, we believe it's important to have a very experienced individuals uh, that start working on, on, the, on the first project that you, you work. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things to figure out. Uh, and uh, the starting team has to be uh, self-starting uh, and very independent uh, and work uh, without any supervision uh, and be able to tackle the problems head on. And uh, another thing which I called multi-instrumentalists, uh, we put our bets on uh, generalists. We think it's important uh, for the starting team to be able to uh, switch from one task to another over a day, work on, uh, say, on level design on one day and on fixing bugs in physics on another. Uh, we had to have uh, people willing to, to do basically whatever we need to do to get uh, the projects off the ground. So this is the starting team. Uh, it was nine of us. Look at this handsome bunch. Uh, and here are the strengths uh, that, that I believe we had that helped us uh, build a successful studio. Uh, so on the left, we have Graham. Uh, he's been a, a technical director at Activision Freestyle for many, many years. Before that, he had leadership roles. He was a lead engine programmer at Codemasters for many years. Uh, he is a low-level programmer, and he's basically throughout those years has been programming actively. Despite uh, his management roles in the recent years, he is basically still a hands-on programmer. And he often switches the hats and becomes a programmer. He's a very skilled uh, project manager and uh, is working in tandem with Tim, who is our senior pro uh, producer, also with more than 10 years of experience at Activision Freestyle and um, also in leadership positions before that, also working uh, in many years as a QA lead. I also put UI programming uh, next to his name because uh, when we started working on the first project, Tim took, up, took on himself to learn a little bit of programming and that and, uh, led to him taking upon himself to build uh, all the UI for the first project that we worked on. Uh, we had Darren uh, who uh, was a tools, uh, his background is tools programming, uh, both desktop and online. Uh, he was a uh, lead tools programmer for many, many years at uh, Activision Freestyle, uh, but he was also uh, uh, working on managing releases, uh, patches, and, and builds for the game, so that was a very important skill for us to have at the beginning. And as well, he was looking after uh, IT infrastructure, uh, so that, that helped us build uh, our own networks, VPNs, and all those sorts of, sort of things uh, for third gen games when we were starting. Uh, we also had uh, Rav, also a very talented programmer, uh, specializing in graphics and engines, so more low level, working with pretty much every console under the sun in his uh, long career. Uh, very good at optimizations and a lot of other things, as I mentioned, and also uh, years of experience uh, as a lead engine programmer. And we have Dan, a uh, high-level uh, gameplay programmer. Uh, he's basically designer's best friend. Uh, anything designers think about, uh, Dan knows how to implement it. Uh, and he's also a metal educator. Uh, he's a walking metal uh, encyclopedia 
And uh, metal actually has an uh, important part uh, in our company's culture, but I guess that's a subject for another talk. Uh, we had uh, Nate with us, uh, um, senior a level designer, game designer at Activision Games, um, Activision Free Star Games. Uh, uh, he's amazing Guitar Hero player and also most likely kick your ass in, at Street Fighter. Um, we have uh, multi-talented multi John, uh, uh, John Rexbury, uh, who is an environment artist uh, and 3D journalist, uh, also very skilled in uh, creating PFX, but generally any art that is required, he is willing to help us with that. He's also got experience as a lead uh, artist for, for many, many years. Uh, we had Mike. Uh, Mike is the type of guy uh, that uh, when you work on the bag for a couple of days and you've tried everything and you pull your hair out and you cry and you que uh, have questions and question your career decisions, you ask Mike, hey Mike, how can I fix it? And Mike usually says, hey, have you tried that? And 99% of the times, that fixes it. And that 1%, when it doesn't, you ask, hey Mike, it didn't work. Okay, how about that then? And that then fixes it. So it's a, an amazing programmer, also very experienced uh, with many consoles, uh, specializing in low-level programming. And finally, there's me. Uh, my background is tools, uh, editors, pipeline, uh, everything online, uh, backends for the games, and servers for the games, these sort of things. And between ourselves, we worked on many uh, many uh, AAA games uh, in our uh, long experience in, uh, in the games industry. Almost forgot about our uh, other founding teams, uh, uh, founding teams members. Uh, it's Waffles, Graham's dog, the cutest and fluffiest dog in the world, and the friendliest as well. Uh, Truffles, the cutest dog with the cutest uh, under, underbite, and Lutre, uh, a wolf dog, a massive dog, that thinks he is a lap dog. And funny bit of trivia, uh, he's closely related uh, to the dogs from Games of Thrones. So I guess we have celebrity in our team. Uh, so overall, we were, uh, the team composition uh, at the start was um, six programmers, one producer, one artist, one designer, and obviously three support dogs that were with us uh, in our uh, office most of the time when we were setting up. And as you can see, uh, as you can see we were um, heavily uh, oriented to, uh, biased towards programming. We had coverage of uh, high-level programming uh, from game plane to systems uh, online to low-level programming, like engine and graphics, uh, we had experience with uh, modern consoles and uh, mobile consoles and uh, mobile uh, devices as well. With coverage of tools and editors. Uh, very importantly, uh, we had experience with DevOps and IT infrastructure. But also a very important thing that helped us, uh, we had people with a lot of experience with planning and management, um, and as well as managing teams, uh, including outsourcing teams, so Team and Graham uh, at Freestyle Games uh, managed a lot of teams, external teams as well, uh, that were helping us build Guitar Hero, and that helped us uh, when we were actually looking for uh, projects later on, because then we were the external team that we were looking for, for projects to help with. Um, we also had a, a lot of experience with managing teams, and that helped us uh, uh, basically build the team when we found the projects to work on and, and when we started growing. And in the art department, we had basic coverage of, of the environment art um, uh, and in design as well, high level uh, design and a very technical hands-on design as well. Uh, so that, that part was probably uh, not fleshed out exactly, but we believe that uh, we have everything to start and should we need help, uh, we believe that would be uh, 
most likely easy part to outsource and, and get help for external companies. So the, the main questions that we had to ask uh, and answer at that time was what type of studio, of studio we want to be, whether we want to work on external projects or our own IPs. And uh, both have their pros and cons. Uh, outsourcing is, um, can be very exciting. Uh, you get to work on many projects for many companies, uh, get to learn from them a lot. Uh, you learn about how they approach things, what technology they use, uh, how they build their teams, uh, what doesn't work and you don't want to replicate that. Uh, but obviously, um, the downside is you don't have all the creative ownership uh, when you work on projects for someone else. And that was an important part for us. Um, owning IP and working on own games uh, is pretty much the opposite. You have all the creative ownership you need. However, um, it's generally much more risky business. Uh, it's much easier to get uh, um, in dire straits at that, that point, and also um, the uh, risk of failure is higher. So we decided on uh, going a 50-50 approach. So we wanted to work on some projects for external companies, but as well um, start working on our own IP uh, and develop that part of the business as well. We discussed also the types of games we want to make, and uh, uh, we decided that we, uh, our experience is in console gaming, in PC gaming, uh, and AAA uh, sphere. So that's where we wanted to go with our company. Uh, in terms of uh, genres of games, we didn't have a strong preference. We uh, knew we wanted to work on uh, first-person perspective and third-person perspective games uh, the most, because that's what we played the most. Uh, but like I said, it wasn't a strong preference. We are happy to work on whatever comes our way. And we came up with short-term and mid to long-term plan at the very beginning. So the short-term plan is obviously we need to incorporate uh, in the UK where we um, have our headquarters. It's fairly easy. Um, can be done all online. In Poland, it's a little bit more involved. It's probably going to take you a week. No, just kidding. A month or three, perhaps. Uh, uh, we had to uh, find an accounting company uh, and uh, have a bank account, found ourselves lawyers that would help us with uh, writing uh, contracts uh, for our employees, as well as looking through the contracts that would be signing with external companies. And we also had to make our website so that uh, uh, our clients can find us. We also had to think about hardware and software that we will have to start with. Uh, for programmers, it's pretty much just PCs and Visual Studio. For artists, it's just Photoshop and Maya to start with. That's what we started with. And obviously, when we secured all of that, uh, our old focus was to find the first client uh, to stop burning our own savings and, and start uh, start earning some money for the, for the studio. And we also thought it was very important to have an office, even though we started working from home. Uh, we believed that we worked better as a team in one physical place. Uh, and that was one of the first things we did as well. Um, and longer term, we uh, wanted to work on our own IP. So we came up with a plan how we want to get there. Uh, we were discussing uh, how we want to scale up, uh, how fast we want to go, uh, and how we are going to get there. And we're also um, investigating various government fundings, uh, funding options. And in the UK, it's uh, the main two ones, I guess, to consider are uh, UK Games found, uh, Fund, as well as uh, Video Games Tax Relief. So this is our uh, first studio, uh, first uh, office that we found. We have a much nicer now, but this is where we started. A nice basement studio, very cramped. It looks actually quite spacious in this photo, but this is how it looks actually with all the hardware and uh, all the people in there. Uh, quite cozy and not much light in there. Uh, and this is how we were conducting our play tests. You can see Dan on the right enjoying himself. Um, 
And yeah, uh, after a few months of intensive uh, networking and reaching out to our uh, contacts at various companies in Leamington, uh, we finally found the first client. It was Slingshot Cartel, a relatively new company, who had uh, an, came that, an idea for the game. Uh, however, they didn't have developers to create for, uh, it for them. They, had, they were based, uh, mostly by uh, art-based studio. Um, they were interested in making that game in Amazon Lumberyard, which is going to be important for my next slide, uh, because they had business right, uh, arrangements uh, with Amazon. Um, and we ended up working for them uh, initially for six, six months uh, with the possibility to expand that should the cooperation uh, go well. And that did go well. We ended up working on that game for a year and a half. Ultimately, uh, that uh, game, we got it to uh, Steam, but uh, it did not find its audience and, and uh, basically died. But we learned a lot from it, and uh, that led us to our next client, Amazon. So uh, Amazon uh, Lumberyard at that time was a very new engine. Uh, it was not ready for production, uh, and Amazon everywhere was saying, don't use it for making games and for releasing games. We did that anyway, and that caught their attention. They were uh, interested in how we did that, that and uh, we obviously uh, had a business relationship with them when we were working on DRG, and they were interested in us porting all the fixes that we made back to the engine's mainline, and we worked for a few months on that. Uh, we followed that with uh, Playground Games and Microsoft Studio, um, and uh, we got this project thanks to our extensive knowledge in racing games. Um, um, several, I think probably seven out of nine founders, uh, several of us worked at Codemasters. That's where we started. Uh, so we knew a lot about racing games, and that's what uh, Playground Games were looking for at the time. They were just about to release Forza 4 and just needed a little bit of help uh, to get that uh, out of the door. And we are helping with low-level low programming there. Uh, we're basically working on the 60, 60 hertz mode for that game. Um, and uh, yeah, there was a lot of console optimizations involved. Uh, we're making sure that it works on all the Xbox One consoles. Uh, and as well as that, we ended up also working on animation tooling for Fable, uh, another project that uh, Playground Games are working on. Uh, it's a very, very good game. I'm looking forward to it to be released. It's looking very good. Um, we follow that with uh, Mythical Games. So that's uh, the game that we work on currently as well. We are lead, a lead developer for that game. We are developing the client and server, while uh, the Mythical, Mythical Games, uh, a games company from United States, from Seattle, are focusing on, the, on building the backend for that game. This time, it's a Unity engine, and it's a multi-platform uh, multi game as well. And just a few months ago, we also started working with a AAA developer and publisher uh, with, multi -million, uh, uh, with multiple millions of players and multi-billion uh, dollar of worth. Uh, it's very exciting, uh, but unfortunately, I cannot really uh, reveal who that is just yet. Uh, but uh, there will be more information about that on our website soon. And in parallel to all those projects for external companies, where we started uh, the project called Area 51. So we knew where we wanted to go. We wanted to create our own games, and uh, we did want to, didn't want to just forget about that. We wanted to make progress, uh, albeit small. Uh, we wanted to make the progress towards that from the very beginning. So we're working on various prototypes in different genres on different platforms, and we're basically looking for something that sticks and that we would like to develop a little bit more later. And we early on uh, realized that we need a little bit more help in the design department and as well in the concept art department uh, because visualizing our ideas is extremely important and it helps you 
sell the project to the wider team uh, when we have some ideas. And through that time, we generated about 10 concepts uh, with game design documents and a lot of concept art. And the original founding team voted on their favorite ones. Uh, and one of them got uh, more votes than everything else and caught our attention which uh, name of it, which uh, just disappeared from a slide, uh, but our internal name for it is uh, GV. Uh, it's going to be a AAA game with pixel uh, visuals and, and uh, pixel art charm. We're developing it in yet another engine. This time it's uh, Unreal Engine 5. It's going to be a multiplayer game, and there's currently about 20 people working on it, and we're expanding that team as well. So. What have we learned from uh, all these endeavors so far? Uh, so we believe that uh, working, being able to work with different engines and different hardware platforms helps us uh, securing the project early on and, and start working and, and uh, bringing in money to the company. Uh, but as well, uh, the experience with project management and uh, planning and uh, scoping projects helped us secure bigger projects uh, with more ownership on our end. So that was uh, DRG and uh, Blanco's book party, which we are lead programmers, uh, uh, lead uh, developers on. So starting, uh, starting up and finding uh, projects to work is an important uh, part, but to be able to work on multiple projects, you need to build an amazing team. And these are uh, the values, and these are uh, the points that we are considering when growing the team. And this is our strategy. So we looked for people that share our values, uh, and uh, we basically want to have a lot in common with them. We want to be able to socialize with them and have a common ground. We wanted to build a team with a tangible culture. We wanted for them to work well together. Um, our most important rule, I guess, which we apply to everything we do, is don't be a duck. Or maybe that was a different word. Also starting with D and ending with K. Uh, but I can't remember now. Anyway, uh, finding the good people on personal level uh, is the most important part for us. Part for us, but uh, we also need to make sure that uh, their skills are aligned with uh, the business requirements for us. Uh, so we also paid a lot of attention for, um, paid a lot of attention to finding people uh, that will, skills of whom we'll be able to utilize uh, in the longer term for projects that we have uh, planned up for, for years to come. We believed uh, a good uh, an excellent recruitment team is a must. Uh, with a, we have Chris with us, uh, who is also a Digital Dragon, so we'll probably meet him downstairs at our stand. He's an excellent guy. Uh, we think it's important to be personal with people and be helpful. So uh, even if someone applies to work for us and ultimately they don't have skills that we require, we always help them uh, by giving them advice and uh, help them throughout their career. Um, we also had to come up with a strategy for interviews, and our strategy was to keep it short and sweet. Uh, there are many companies that do multi-step uh, interviews. We usually do just two calls. Uh, the first call is to get to know the person that we talked to, and just on high level, uh, find out what their current experience is, what they've done so far. And the second call is more technical, uh, depending on the department they work in, uh, with some people on our team, just finding out if their skills uh, are exactly what we are looking for. And obviously, along this way, you will make some mistakes. Uh, you will hire people that ultimately don't have skills that you require. Uh, it's important to learn from. Uh, from these mistakes, uh, you need to con continuously improve your uh, interviews process. For instance, if, if you hire someone that ultimately 
uh, did not meet expectations, you need to ask yourself, how did that happen? How you need to improve your uh, interview questions? Maybe the process is not right. Maybe we need to do something else. And uh, yeah, it's very important because um, uh, hiring a bad person can uh, bring morale down of the whole team, and we obviously don't want that. Um, hiring people and great team uh, is an important step, but even more important is retaining that team with you. And uh, we believe having a good salary is not good enough. You have to have much more to have good benefits. At the very least, you have to have a good private med medical insurance. Uh, we also believe it's very important to support people's uh, personal growth. Uh, so we are supporting people, people's desires to learn, to, to up their skills, uh, by providing them with uh, training days when they can basically learn whatever they want. It doesn't have to be uh, related to what they do they, in their day job. Uh, it's just uh, something that they want to know more about it. Uh, what we learned as well, uh, people are looking for, is a stance on crunch. Uh, our stance is clear. We don't do it. Uh, we have crunched on many games in the past, the founding team, and uh, we just didn't find it uh, helpful. Uh, short time, maybe. Longer time is actually uh, deteriorating team's morale and uh, ultimately does not speed up uh, games development. Uh, we are supporting people who uh, want to change their careers. Uh, perhaps they are fresh out of uh, university. Uh, they started in one department but decided actually it's not what I want to do. We don't have a problem with that. Uh, quite, quite the opposite. Uh, many people who have worked uh, with us initially in QA for instance or in programming moved to production and design, for instance. Uh, that's all fine with us. Uh, we believe that we need uh, strong leads uh, with uh, technical knowledge as well, uh, just because that helps people to grow up and take on new challenges. We think uh, small teams work much better than large ones, um, mainly because uh, we want leads to know their teams well, uh, their strengths and weaknesses, and uh, can build a plan for them to grow as uh, in their respective uh, respective roles. And I left this uh, as the last point, um, but it's probably one of the most important things to us as well. We want to build an inclusive and friendly team, and I'm going to back it up with some stats from uh, games uh, industry. Uh, uh, from the games industry in the UK. So 24 people reported to be uh, non-heterosexual uh, among game developers. 20% uh, of game developers in the UK uh, are from Europe and about 9% uh, are from other countries outside of Europe. There are also 67% uh, of uh, 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 men 30% of women and 3% 3, uh, 3 of uh, non-binary people um, in games industry. So it's important to make all of them uh, feel loved and included in the team. So what in the end helped us succeed? Uh, I think it was uh, predominantly having the team who had had worked together uh, well for many years. I was prepared uh, for challenges and tackling them together. Uh, by that time, we had more than 10, experience, uh, 10 years of experience uh, in the game industry, and we built up a long, uh, uh, long list of uh, business uh, relationships with other companies uh, in Leamington Spa as well. So that helped us uh, uh, finding the first uh, project quickly and hit the ground running. Uh, obviously, the, ra uh, the wide range of skills helped us a lot. Uh, we are able to talk to very uh, different companies uh, with different games that uh, they were making and we are basically able to uh, ensure them that uh, we will be capable of working on those projects. And finally, uh, finding the project, the DRG project that we worked on early on helped us uh, start quickly and uh, and basically, um, they risk our endeavor uh, within the first few months 
of our existence. Um, so moving from AAA to indie also helped us a lot. We learned a lot at big companies in the past, and we just didn't have to uh, repeat those mistakes when we worked independently. But also uh, the location where we started, uh, full of uh, game developers and different companies, uh, helped us as well. Uh, the large number of people that live in Leamington uh, who could join us, uh, our company, was a very, a very important uh, factor as well. The challenges, uh, I think those are probably shared among all of companies here. Uh, finding the right people, especially programmers, uh, it's an ongoing challenge. Uh, we are finding very good programmers, but it's just taking time, and there's always more that we need than, than we hire. And I think the big challenges as well um, to build a team uh, while working remotely. So during the pandemic, we moved to uh, a hybrid mode, and uh, it works very well on technical level. Uh, people are making, making amazing uh, games and working just fine, uh, but we want to preserve the culture that we build in Terracon Games, and we need to come up with new and, and uh, uh, new approaches to do that, and, and we do that by uh, encouraging people to, uh, to come to the office and, and meet uh, our teams in person, because that's, that's what we believe is important. So what we are going to do next, and, and uh, what's next in the store for us? Uh, so we've been uh, going from project to project, and each of those projects uh, uh, created uh, new opportunities to us. We believe we'll continue doing just that. Uh, we are currently working on three projects. Um, uh, one of them is a very big company uh, with a very uh, exciting project that we are developing and helping with. We just opened uh, TKG Poland. Uh, that's a milestone, big milestone for us. Uh, we are growing that team. Uh, please talk to us if you like we, had, uh, we have many positions for that. We are initially starting with programmers, but we are going to go full studio here. And uh, yeah, we're going to be working on more projects for sure as well in the future. So summing, summing up, uh, there's no recipe for uh, one's recipe for success. This was our story. Uh, we believed that starting with a technical team as well, supported by management and project uh, uh, project management and production uh, work, us, work out very well for us, uh, but there are obviously other paths uh, that may be successful. Uh, it's hard work, but very rewarding. I expect to work late nights, but uh, it will be worth it. Uh, we believe uh, that having experience uh, uh, at uh, other companies, in AAA game, uh, game companies early on, helped us uh, succeed. Uh, we think it's important to decide what you want to be as a company and stick to that and basically work towards it throughout uh, your history. Even if you make small teams, uh, small steps at the beginning, it's important you make those steps. Um, you have to assemble a good team to start with. Uh, you have to be ready to work with them when things go well, but also when things go not too well, when you are running out of funds and you need to be prepared to go to take and thin with them. And finally, you need a business plan. You need to know uh, how much funding you have, how much time you have, and uh, uh, what, to, what you want to do in the short and long term. Um, so yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening to my musings. Hope you found it interesting. And I don't know if we have time uh, for questions, but. If you have a few, uh, I can help you and, and uh, try to answer them. Yes? Uh, you said uh, you wanted to uh, start with your own project. Um, can you uh, describe uh, how much of your uh, energy and uh, uh, your whole team uh, is uh, engaged in?
Sure. Um, so uh, our plan is to be uh, about 50-50 uh, in a very short time. Currently, we are at about 60 percent, uh, 66 to 33. So we have two big projects that we are working, developing currently, um, and one big project uh, that's our our own IP, uh, completely owned by us and, and developed by us. Uh, in terms of whether we succeeded or not, I think we did. Uh, we are continuing along to the plan that we set out to do. We knew we had to start uh, with uh, working for external companies because that's generally safer path. Uh, and we're just expanding that team and we believe we will be at uh, 50, 50 uh, stage uh, soon. Um, basically, whenever we find all those pesky programmers. Uh, yes? Uh, sorry, I'll start the second uh, question. Um, so when I said uh, late nights, I meant the founders. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, we just accepted that. Uh, uh, it's also something that we don't have to do. We just do it because we enjoy uh, what we are doing. Uh, but yeah, we never requested late nights from our teams. And so far, ha haven't had to do it. And we are not intending to. And we are doing everything we can. Uh, to, for that not to happen. Um, and for your first question, whether there were conflicts uh, between uh, outsourcing and working uh, on our own IP, um, not really. Uh, by the time we started the company, we worked on many games. Uh, and if, if, it was, if that was the path uh, that will take us to working on our own IP and big game, so be it. Uh, we could have started working on smaller games uh, and have our own IP earlier. Uh, our, our ambitions were greater. We had a pedigree in AAA and uh, large games for PC and consoles, and that's where we wanted to go, and that's where our first IP is. So it's taking a little bit longer, but because that's because we want to build something bigger. Okay. I don't know. That's a very good question. Uh, obviously, I cannot say we haven't made mistakes, but I don't think there were, there were many. Uh, I think my personal mistake that, that I made and that I wanted to improve is uh, I hired, hired a person on my team who was an excellent guy, uh, but ultimately he didn't pass a probation, and that was a head breaking <laughs> for me, obviously for him as well. I don't want to be a victim here, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's why I'm I underlined uh, that point on my presentation that uh, I learned lessons from that. Uh, we are perhaps more strict in our interviews than some, uh, but we just don't want to make the, these mistakes uh, in the future. Yes? Hello, I'm Manuel. I work for a research company called Hi, Swiss. Manuel. I'm uh, doing a research project for the European Commission on the uh, industry in general. My question is about funding. You mentioned that uh, at the beginning of your company, Uh, so the criterion is, uh, first and foremost, we want to uh, preserve our creative ownership of the game. Uh, it's obviously much easier to sell part of the game or part of the business to, to companies. Uh, but uh, we've been there, done that. Uh, we don't want to do that. Uh, in terms of uh, where we are looking, so far we've been just looking uh, on uh, uh, look, uh, researching uh, Program, uh, govern, government programs in the UK. Uh, we just started a company in Poland, and we are starting looking at uh, European options as well. So that's something to to come in the near future. I have time for one more question. If you have any. Okay. Oh, there's one.
Um, so I think that's a similar question uh, to. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, at least not uh, with the starting team. Uh, like I said, we were, happy, uh, we were lucky enough to secure projects that we uh, were lead developers on. So we had a lot of creative ownership there. Uh, so it wasn't really a problem. It hasn't been a problem so far. And for a bigger team, uh, obviously when we are interviewing people and hiring people, we uh, let them know what they're going to be working on. Uh, so there are no surprises. Uh, so people who are joining us uh, are generally happy with what they are working on. Yeah, uh, sure, yeah, sure. Uh, personally, I would ideally work on, uh, ideally work on our own IP 100% uh, of the time, and I think uh, eventually we'll get there, but it's not keeping me up at night, to be honest. Uh, we're working very great companies currently. Uh, I really wish I could say who they are. Uh, so despite it's an outsourcing work, it's very rewarding and uh, yeah, it's no reason to <laughs> not do it, basically. I guess it's, it's important to, to pick the right projects to work on, uh, being an sourcing company. Uh, projects like uh, porting a game to a new platform, which is finished and is just a uh, grant work, really. So perhaps not expo uh, that exciting. That's, uh, um, that's what we've been avoiding so far. We are looking for projects where we can utilize our uh, management skills and project management skills and so on. Uh, so that helps, for sure. Okay, I think that's time. Uh, thank you very much for joining me here and listening to my ramblings. I hope it was interesting. Thank you.